39-year-old Zhang Yiqin is an infrastructure project builder. Over the past 13 years, he has helped build a series of construction projects in the Bahamas, Egypt and many other countries. A challenging situation can drive a person to tap into his or her potential. When you try hard, the difficulties will not be that frightening as you previously imagined. Always ready to take challenges and passionate about his work, Zhang has demonstrated to the world the superb building prowess and excellent teamwork of Chinese builders. But what does this Chinese builder look like? And how has he surmounted the challenges he encountered? Join us for this episode of Connected on Footprints to find out. On a scorching hot summer's day, we went to meet Zhang Yiqing, the newly appointed chief manager of a major Beijing-based construction company, officially called the China Construction First Group Construction and Development Company. When he arrived at the meeting room, we felt an instant quickening of pace of things and people around him. With a tall frame and fast gait, his presence brought a feeling of confidence, energy and firmness. At the age of only 39 years old, his voice betrays both usefulness and authority, a quality undoubtedly arising from his managerial position. In fact, it only took a little more than a decade for Jiang to be transformed from a college graduate to a company manager in charge of thousands of employees and assets amounting to billions of US dollars. His spectacular rise started in the summer of 2010 when he graduated from Tsinghua University and joined the company of which he is now in charge. As a fresh graduate from one of China's most prestigious higher learning institutes, he started from the very basics to get familiar with the administrative system of his company and the construction projects it was undertaking. My superiors at the time sent me to work for a short while at different construction sites across China. Such an experience allowed me to understand what it's really like in terms of undertaking a project. Being a fast learner and willing to take risks, he soon applied to go abroad to take part in the construction of a resort in the Bahamas, a grand real estate project. I was confident that I could adapt to a foreign working environment. Moreover, I wanted to see the world. You know, there were few such opportunities at the time. Most of the business of our company was involved within China. So I cherished the opportunity, as it was not easy to get. Zhang Yiqing lived and studied in the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region for a year as an exchange student. That experience helped him improve his English-speaking skills and his ability to adapt to a new environment. The young man jumped at the opportunity of working on the Bahamas project, eager to gain as much practical experience as possible. His family fully supported his decision. I got married before setting off for the Bahamas. My wife gave me her full support. My parents, my wife and I all agreed that my choice would be beneficial to my career development and the welfare of my whole family in the long term, although we needed to pay a price. One of the prices he paid was that Zhang and his family had to endure long-term separation. At the end of June 2011, Zhang and seven other young employees of his company flew to work at the construction site of the Bahamas. On June 30th, 2011, they arrived at the International Airport of Nassau, capital of the island country. Upon landing, Zhang instantly felt the warmth and hospitality of the Bahamians. I remember when we were waiting for customs clearance at the airport, we saw a group of performers dancing and singing nearby. This scene was atypical. You don't see such a scene in most other international airports. 
The Bahamas is a very popular tourist destination. The country relies on tourism for much of its national income and economy. Staging performances in the international airport was a way to attract tourists and show the country's hospitality. From the airport, the young man went straight to the construction site. The resort project, occupying 1,100 acres, was near a beach called Cable in the Bahamas capital Nassau. The floor area of the buildings to be erected amounted to 320,000 square meters. At the time, the project was the largest of its kind in the Americas and the largest overseas house-building project undertaken by a Chinese enterprise. Zhang was assigned to purchase mechanical and electrical equipment for the project while carrying out liaison with local business partners of his company. The eight of them were the second batch of personnel sent by the company to work on the Bahamas project. The first batch, about 30 individuals, arrived in the first half of 2011. The project started in May 2011 in earnest. He had to quickly adapt and learn on the job. It's like joining a group of bike riders halfway through. After you join them, you must speed up to catch up with the group. It's a challenge to quickly adapt to the pace and the new working environment. Doing a project overseas is different from doing a project domestically. At the time, even experienced workers and my superiors needed to adapt while tutoring me. During this process, all of us had to learn to adapt. At the same time, I had to complete the task assigned to me. In general, this was a major challenge for me. Zhang turned the challenge into an opportunity. Always seeing things in a positive light, young Zhang Yiqing made use of the opportunity to bring out his full potential. A challenging situation can drive a person to tap into his or her potential. When you try hard, the difficulties will not be that frightening as you previously imagined. So after I became a project manager in later years, I suggested to my superiors that we should deploy young workers to the front line of construction projects, including projects in a foreign country. You should trust the potential. In the Bahamas project, Zhang organized the purchasing of mechanical and electrical equipment, ranging from screws to industrial purpose air conditioners. Writing emails and making calls every day, Zhang communicated with suppliers of the equipment in the United States, which is near the Bahamas. Making use of his computer knowledge, he established a software database monitoring the purchase, arrival and destination of all the mechanical and electrical equipment. His work helped improve the efficiency of the whole project. Halfway through his stay there, his outstanding work was recognized by the company. He was promoted to be a deputy manager in charge of purchasing and commercial relations of the Bahamas project. Altogether, Zhang worked at the Bahamas project for three and a half years. The Bahamas project helped him develop as a professional career person and, more importantly, laid the foundation for him to grow to be a construction project manager. I have developed a good work habit during the Bahamas project. I learned how to communicate well with my superiors, fellow colleagues and commercial partners. And he has made many good friends among his colleagues, with whom he can cooperate well in future projects. Among them is Liu Yu, who is two years younger than him. The two first met in 2011 and both volunteered to work in the Bahamas project. Liu, who was born in 1986, says Zhang is good at communicating with others and is a gifted problem solver. Liu noticed early on that Zhang possessed good leadership traits. During all the years since I first met him, I have never seen John infuriated or complaining at work. Whenever he faces a problem, he calmly analyzes it with logic and tries to find out its root causes and then solve it. He's always cool-headed, a trait which many people lack. 
The two both have good memories of their days in the Bahamas, which Chang compares to a paradise on Earth. The resort they helped build opened to business in 2017, drawing tens of thousands of tourists visiting it every year. Company figures show that more than 5,000 workers have participated in the construction of the resort project. The resort was forecast to bring nearly 1.8 billion US dollars of economic benefits to the Bahamas annually. Zhang Yiching says the island country is included in his family's travel plans, although he is yet to spare the time from his busy schedule to make it happen. In fact, the project is an epitome of the good relations between China and the Bahamas, which established diplomatic ties in 1997. Speaking in May 2023, Bahamian Prime Minister Philip Davis described the bilateral relations over the past 26 years as fruitful. I must say that since the relations has commenced, we, we have had a very fruitful relationship and they have come to our aid in many instances when we needed assistance. And so the relationship has been very fruitful and China has made several significant investments in the Bahamas and we look forward to the continuing those investments. After Zhang Yiching returned to China from the Bahamas in 2015, he served briefly in various managerial positions in projects both at home and abroad. At the end of 2017, Zhang was set to begin his second major overseas construction project. This time, his destination was Egypt, and he served as the project manager for the Package 4 section of the central business district of Egypt's new administrative capital. Being built some 50 kilometers east of the Egyptian capital Cairo, the new administrative capital and its central business district are designed to relocate major government institutions from the increasingly congested and overpopulated capital city, which is home to about one-fifth of the country's 100 million population. According to the contract, his company was to build two interconnected high-rise office buildings. Right after being appointed to oversee the project, Zhang put his heart and soul into it. As the first step, he quickly built his team. His experience in the Bahamas helped him. His team includes some of his friends he made during the Bahamian project, such as Liu Yu. On March 14, 2018, Zhang and five others flew to the Egyptian capital of Cairo, embarking on his journey as a builder in Egypt. As the manager of the project, Zhang had to deal with all kinds of activities related to the project, from building and managing a team to ensuring the engineering and technical success of the project. When recalling the experience, Zhang says he was confident in his ability, although he was very young then, 33 years old, and only eight years into his career. To him, technical or engineering issues were not much of a challenge. The real challenge was something else. I knew the project well before I set off for Egypt. I participated in the planning phase of the project in 2016 and 2017. I knew the contours of the project and what major challenges it would pose to us. Moreover, from an engineering perspective, the project was not supposed to be very challenging. The challenges arose from our lack of experience in doing projects in that particular region. In my judgment at the time, I was confident that I could overcome the difficulties and challenges that I would encounter. Altogether, Zhang was responsible for overseeing thousands of engineers, technicians and workers from both China and Egypt. His managerial team numbered 130. 50% of them were Egyptian. The average number of workers numbered about 2,000. More than half of them were Egyptian. For Zhang himself, his main challenge was to organize and encourage his large group of people to get along well with each other and work with efficiency. We should have the capacity for empathy. With empathy, we can better communicate with each other and then solve problems when we face them. And this can smooth over the working relations in a hierarchical corporate structure. In the second month after their arrival, Zhang and Liu Yu set up a happiness center, 
where employees could do exercises and relax in their spare time. Liu was to be responsible for the welfare of the workers, team building, and creating a corporate culture where Chinese and foreign workers could cooperate well. Zhang and Liu devised an innovative scheme for Chinese and Egyptians to experience each other's culture while respecting each other's unique customs. Whenever there was an Egyptian festival, Chinese and Egyptian workers were organized to dine together, eating Egyptian food. When celebrating a Chinese festival, Chinese food would be featured at their common celebratory parties. Zhang reminisces about the scenes of Chinese and Egyptians enjoying hot pot, a very slow and interactive meal that involves everyone cooking their food in a shared pot of broth. Encapsulating China's communal dining culture, the meal is more of an experience than a dish itself. Enjoying such a meal together allowed Chinese and Egyptians to eat and talk just like close friends and family members. Under Zhang's guidance, Liu also created programs for Chinese and Egyptians to carry out volunteer service together. Every month we did volunteer service independently or together with local charities. For example, we went to visit the elderly in nursing homes. We put up a Chinese-style performance or sang a Chinese song in front of them. They were very happy and gave us a hearty smile, which made us feel warm and encouraged. Warm and encouraged. The feeling is also true the other way around. Salwa Sa'ad is an Egyptian engineer who's been hired by the Chinese company since 2019. Sa'ad is responsible for quality control. Through her years of work and interactions with Zhang and other Chinese, Sa'ad finds the team atmosphere warm and family-like. She attributes this to the good leadership of Zhang. He treats us like a big brother and family, not only as a manager. He makes big family between the Chinese and the Egyptian, and uh, he teaches a lot of things in our work. Zhang's strong leadership and the hard work carried out by both Chinese and Egyptian builders ensured the project progressed smoothly from the first foundational column they laid underground in 2019 to the topping out of the main structures two years later. But in the summer of 2021, Zhang and his Chinese team met an unexpected challenge from Egyptian engineers. Zhang says the challenge, like other ones he has faced, didn't come from the pure engineering or technological sphere, as Chinese builders and companies are very experienced in infrastructure construction. Instead, they were often challenged to encourage foreign engineers to accept Chinese building technologies which have long been proved safe and efficient in a great number of projects within China. Zhang says his team came across such a challenge when they tried to build a skyway between two buildings, which involved lifting a ready-made bridge into the air to fit in between the two office buildings. On July 1, 2021, after 18 hours of hard work, the iconic bridge or air corridor connecting the two office buildings was successfully lifted and installed. The steel skyway has a span of 31.4 meters and weighs 161 tons. It has been described as the corridor of China-Egypt friendship or as a gateway to China-Egypt cooperation. We used four sets of hydraulic lifting equipment, similar to jacks, to lift the steel corridor. We overcame some technical difficulties. If the lifting speed was too fast, the steel corridor would be unstable. If it was too slow, there was a risk of failure due to adverse weather conditions. We had to have the perfect speed to lift it, then place and fit it into the correct position. But behind this feat, Zhang Yicheng and his team have had to make great efforts to convince Egypt's project quality supervisors. The corridor weighs 161 tons. Lifting such a heavy structure 141 meters above the ground was not an easy task. Moreover, there is no previous application in Egypt of this technology. Egyptian quality supervisors were doubtful. 
Originally, Chinese builders planned to lift the structure on June the 29th, 2021, and invited media to live broadcast the process. Two days before the planned lifting, Egyptian supervisors demanded Chinese builders to demonstrate the feasibility and safety of the technology with a controlled experiment. As a result, Chinese engineers and technicians used the hydraulic equipment to lift the air corridor 20 centimeters above the ground and made it stay there for 24 hours. The experiment succeeded, and it finally convinced the Egyptian quality supervisors. When the lifting started the next day, the scene attracted many members of the local media and engineers. Egyptian engineer Salwa Saad was amazed by the scene. Managers and engineers, we stay at the site all the night to protect the project, the bridge, and to see what happened step by step. See and check the level every step for this bridge till be safe and till reach the floor 29. And after we finish this, this is very fantastic and a very good job for us, and we celebration for this. Zhang Yiching says the celebration was not only for his team, but also for the successful application of Chinese building technologies in a foreign land, which are yet to be recognized by more and more countries. Through the Egyptian project, Zhang has summed up important lessons for Chinese builders undertaking infrastructure projects in foreign countries. We should first adapt ourselves to local conditions. We must first follow the rules, norms, and standards of the local market. In this way, it's easier to gain the trust of our partners. After trust is established, we then can promote to them our own ways of management and Chinese building technologies. If trust has been established, it becomes easier for them to accept. In December 2021, as the Egyptian project Zhang had overseen was winding down, he returned to China. His excellent work in Egypt led to his promotion to the position of deputy chief manager of his company, in charge of market sales. In 2023, Zhang Yiching was again promoted chief manager of his company, which includes thousands of employees. At present, the company, a subsidiary of the conglomerate China State Construction Engineering Corporation, undertakes more than 170 projects. Ten of them are in foreign countries, including Egypt, Iraq, Russia, and Chile, which have all joined the Belt and Road Initiative. Zhang admits that the overseas projects only comprise a small part of his company's business, about four percent in terms of income. But that four percent overseas business consumes about twenty percent of his time and energy. He forecasts an increase in this business area in the future. This part of business is very important. It's much more difficult and imperative to control risks emerging from it than domestic business. If a problem occurs to our overseas business, it will be very hard for us to solve, and it will affect our company's overall operation and prestige. Of course, conversely, the four percent overseas business will bring great benefits, much larger than this proportion, if it develops well. The four percent overseas projects undertaken by Jiang's company are part of the overall cooperation between China and other countries under the framework of the Belt and Road Initiative, which was launched a decade ago. According to China's Foreign Ministry, this initiative has created 420,000 jobs for partner countries and lifted nearly 40 million people out of poverty over the past 10 years. Now serving as the chief manager of his company. Zhang Yiching is busy with charting a long-term development strategy. While steering his company in the treacherous commercial world, Zhang says he stands ready to accept new challenges and to impress the world with outstanding Chinese building prowess. With that, we conclude this edition of Footprints. Thanks for listening. I'm Bob Jones. If you're interested in hearing more about the lives of ordinary but incredible people in China, 
follow us on Apple Podcasts. Just key in Footprints and you can find more stories anytime, anywhere. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.